Hi, this is my story. In 2021, I was one morning headed to do something I do all the time, which is uh, lead worship. <laughs> and it sort of happened out of nowhere. I don't even remember how it started, but I was just driving. I think the first thing I felt was a sensation of this bombardment of anxiety and fearful thoughts that started kind of flooding my mind all at once. And it was stuff like, you know, you don't have to walk in the room, you know, uh, you can turn the car around. I don't want to do this right now. I don't want to stand in front of people. I don't want to sing. Um, just go home. <laughs> like Everything in me uh, was telling me not to go and sing and not to lead people in worship. And I think the wildest thing about it is that um, I felt like I barely had control, you know, over my own body, you know, it's like things like nausea. And, um, and so it was really, really intense. I remember my hands were shaking and I didn't really know what to do. So I called my wife and I just explained with the few words that I had what was going on. And my wife uh, just said, babe, I think what's happening, I think you're experiencing like an anxiety attack. And I had friends and family that have walked through similar things, but I'd never experienced that personally for myself. In that moment, we prayed together. And she, or really more, she prayed for me. And then she just sort of walked me through it and said, keep breathing, it's okay, keep breathing, and keep driving. You know, you don't have to pull in anywhere yet. And then she just said, you know, let's, why don't you just start saying the name of Jesus? And so I just started, the best I could do was just say the name of Jesus in that moment. I was able to come back down to earth and, uh, and sort of gather myself enough to be able to go through the doors and lead people into worship. I was at home the next day, actually, um, in prayer. I would really just have my Bible open and I was just desperate just to just to talk to God about it and figure out what was going on. And God immediately kind of brought me to Psalm 139. I'm not too sure if my Bible was already open there or uh, if there was a thought, but something sent me to Psalm 139. And um, I want to read it for you. There was a few moments in this passage that really, it was like light shining on me in the middle of darkness. It says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you have known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot even attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? And this is the part that really got me. <laughs> or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, or other translations is hell. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for the darkness is as light with you. For you form my inward parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me when yet there were none of them. And this part is the one that uh, hit me like a ton of bricks. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, uh, they are more than the sand. I would, I awake, and I'm still with you. If I were to count the thoughts of God, they outnumber the grains of sand, and that even when I wake up, 
I'm still with you. I think, um, you know, I'm 34 now, traveling for a long time since I was about 16, and leading people in worship and writing songs. I think the interesting thing is, though, for me, is that I've, um, as I've gotten older, I've realized that life really is filled with a lot of trouble and pain and suffering. It's not all a bed of roses. And um, Jesus talked about that. He said, in this world, you will have trouble, sort of promised to us. Uh, but he said, take heart, I've already overcome the world. Um, C.S. Lewis mentioned that um, all, each of us are born into enemy territory. We're born into a world that's fallen and corrupted with sin and death. And so I think what I was sensing really, and I've been trying to work this out for a while, but I think what I was sensing was just the magnitude of the pain that each of us experience every single day, whether it's friends in your world or family members that are really going through hard things, um, or you yourself are walking through something really, really intense. And then you look out in the news and you're surrounded by events happening in the world that seem out of your control. And there's a lot of things when you wake up in the morning uh, that can cause fear and nobody would sort of blame you for being afraid of them. But Jesus said that he's overcome the world. And I've been trying to work out how, how does he overcome the world if I'm still experiencing trouble and pain and suffering? And I think, I think where I've come to with the Lord and in, in reading the word is that although I might experience these things, his presence never leaves me. And that might sound a little spiritual or maybe even trivial, but it's just the truth. Um, you know, Jesus mentioned it in John 15 that he's, he's the vine. And apart from him, I can do nothing. And I think in my young Christian mind, growing up when I would hear that scripture, I would think about doing like super Christian things, you know, like uh, singing for people or preaching the gospel or, um, you know, all the big things that we think about when we think about doing righteous or good things. Um, but I think where I've come to now is that I just, I think what Jesus meant, it's not just those things. It's, it's living, you know. Um, in the same way without oxygen, I'm not... Um, I'm not just without oxygen, I'm not living, I'm actually slowly perishing, slowly withering away. Um, Jesus, if he's the vine, then without him, without abiding in him, uh, it's, it's like trying to live without oxygen. And um, my walk with God these days has become um, a lot less formal, a lot less religious, and it's just, it's been more like spending time with someone that I really want to get to know and just sitting with them. I think before that anxiety attack, a lot of my, not all, but a good portion of my walk with God was centered around my problems and my circumstances. And I think now I'm realizing the beauty that, you know, of course God wants to take care of me. He wants to meet all of my needs because he's a loving father. But I think more than anything, he just wants me to know his thoughts and his ways. And when I am with him, I want to become more like him. And, um, you know, Jesus said in John 15, these words I've spoken to you so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be full. God wants you and I to experience joy and uh, joy that's really full, um, not just circumstantial happiness, but real joy. And that's the thing that I've discovered in Jesus, is when I'm with him, uh, when I listen to the sound of his voice through his word or through his spirit speaking to me, I experience real joy that carries me through my day. It's beyond circumstantial happiness. And uh, I experience his love changing me in the midst of what I'm walking through and not just rescuing me from what I'm walking through. So yeah, hope that encourages you.